I mean, there, there were always talks about, for instance, Princess Diana, about getting too close to her, her bodyguards, about an, an affection developing there. Um, I suppose you guys would take ownership, you take it quite personally of who you're protecting. Uh, yeah, I would say, I mean, I, I, I don't know about Matt, but I, it does go on, it happens. Yeah. And I think it's because you have a very close protective bond with your principal. And I do know of occasions where the line has been crossed. So you always have to remain as professional as you possibly can. But it can be difficult. And I've had the odd occasion um, in the past where the female principal has perhaps become a little attached. Principal is what you call the principal the being the client, yeah, the, the client. person that you're protecting. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it's actually kind of important to ensure that you're maintaining that respectful distance. And also, I think very importantly, like with a lot of my teams, I'll swap them out quite regularly mm -hmm. so they don't become yes. too attached. Yeah. And what kind of people have you looked after? I, I suppose you can't name names. Well, I tend not to, yes, for, for a variety of reasons, including large sort of confidentiality yeah. agreements, which I'm usually obliged to sign. Uh, but from heads of state uh, through to a lot of A-list Hollywood celebrities, some very well-known pop stars, uh, some industrialists. Royalty. Uh, some foreign royalty, royalty. yeah, you know, quite a mixed match. So. Uh, you, Matt, on the other hand, have talked openly about who you looked yeah. after, which is Michael Jackson. How long did you protect him for? Uh, ten years. Ten years. The difference between us, we were talking about this, he was a friend first, and then I found myself in that position of looking after him and being his bodyguard. We were introduced by a mutual friend, and uh, we hit it off, so we were a friend for a number of years. And then I found myself in that position. But, of course, I had that emotional attachment. He, he was my friend, so I, I did have a different um, situation to what, to what we'll have we'll are you, had. Are you different contact. type of bodyguards? I mean, you, your background's military. What about you? Just martial arts, and uh, he was people in his inner circle, just people he could trust, basically, mm. introduced by friends. He didn't trust anyone else. But like Will said, mm. the hired help, we would switch often. He used to say familiarity would breed contempt, you know? You can be friendly with them, but you can't be their friend. But it's yeah, a very fine line, I wasn't Will. military either, actually. Mm. I came from a civilian background. I just found that I got immersed with a number of guys, particularly military, who I'd operate alongside, and ultimately from there. So the, the, this is, a, again, an interesting aspect of the industry. A lot of people immediately think it's predominantly ex-military and police, but there are a lot of civilians who have spent considerable mm. time, obviously, in the industry as well. What is the training like, Will? Because, you know, there's a lot of, of um, things we saw in cars and having to look at, you know, who's following you in car parks and exits from buildings. And, you know, there's a lot goes behind this. You know, when you see that person standing there and literally their eyes darting around, what are you looking for and what's the training you get? Well, the training is huge. I mean, there are so many aspects to it. It's more to it, as, as Matt knows, than just simply being able to deal with the situation physically. I mean, if you are having to deal with it physically, something has gone wrong in your planning. A lot of it is about ensuring that you don't have to actually physically get involved with a threat. And it's planning it around it from the intricacies of the journey management. So a lot of it's logistics, facilitation. It's also technical, it's cyber. There are so many different aspects. So when you see a bodyguard, particularly looking after someone who is of very significant importance or potentially is a high risk, you want to make sure that you're covering all aspects of their protection mm. from their home, their, their mm. personal life, right through to them. OK. Have you ever found yourself in an extreme situation when, whilst looking after somebody? Yeah, once or twice. I mean, I've, I've worked between Hong Kong and New York and a few sandy places in between, so I spent time in Iraq, Afghanistan and a few other hostile environments. We've had a few contacts, as we would call it, so you've a few ambushes and a few attacks. But again, that's generally predictive of the, uh, of the environment that you're in rather than it is necessarily anything else. Hopefully, if you have a principal who has a threat against them, mm. you're evading that scenario or situation mm. potentially being able to manifest. We used to get death threats every day with Michael, constantly. Yeah. And every before day? Social, yeah, every day. And it's before social media times too, so we, he used to cancel key events and so on, and leave his children in other countries because mm. he thought it was too risky. The most dangerous event I've ever had of him, trying to catch a train at Paddington Station, funny enough. Everyone come off the trains and got mobbed and was pushing us on the rails. And... It was very frightening. I mean, yeah. how, how nervous was Michael about being out? Not, not nervous car? at all. He's, um, my lessons, my education came from him. He would always say to me, I've had this since I was five years old, Matt. I know what I'm doing. So I used to check on him and say, you OK? He said, yeah, fine. So he taught me how to 
manoeuvre and... Did and you have signals? Wanted. Like, if you're looking after somebody, are there signals that they can make with an eye, a finger or something? If they're nervous, they want you closer, further away? I had one particular trick which I used to use with a few industrialists. And it's always difficult, as Matt will know, to judge the space that you need to give the principal, so when they're meeting with other people or fans or whatever. And this particular trick used to be that I'd have my... I'd say to the principal, with your hands, if you want me closer to you, mm. just bring your fingers together. And if I'm too close to you and you want a bit more space, just bring your fingers out. Mm -hmm. And it was just a very si one of many different silent signals that we would agree to make sure that they felt comfortable, but also I could read the room and also read them. You're lucky. Yeah. Michael just used to tell me, can you give me more space? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've had that. I've yeah. had that too.